All right, there we go. So here you are, and we are trying to talk about, well, we are talking about seven secrets from successful unschoolers for how to deal with this back to school season. So welcome to the webinar, and an hour can, can fly by quickly. I have a lot to say. So I do want you to look in the chat. Katie is going to give you um, a PDF that I made for you. And it is 11 pages. I think I think I only have, yeah, it's 11 pages. And um, basically it's walking through some of the stuff that we're gonna talk about. So if you, if you want to click the link and then um, you'll be able to download it right there because it's Google Drive. And if you can't get to downloading it, you can just, um, use a spiral, you know, write notes wherever you want to write them, things like that. So I just like to give people little workbooks because <laughs> even though, even though as unschoolers, we are, we are not big workbook people. Um, let me see if I can make this happen over here. Even though we're not big workbook people, we, the parents were raised with a more schooly approach and we kind of like workbooks. And so a lot of people really um, like to follow along or like to have a place to keep notes and maybe put it in a notebook or something like that. So there should be that happening right now. Um, all right, let's see if I can do one more thing. And I'm gonna try to open the chat so I can see it a little bit. All right, so Katie got that up there for you. So be sure to grab that. I had to click add on again. Okay. Oh, good. All right, and then if you'll if you'll just go ahead and mute yourselves because that was something I didn't do. You know, you can mute people when they're arriving, but I didn't think about that. So um, I am gonna move this because this might be in the way. So the school bus is pulled away, right? <laughs> without your kids and for some of us this can make us a little bit nervous right um we're caught we're not all that confident in our choice some of us are really confident and we're ready to do it and you're just here because you want to have more ideas or a little more sparkle or um, suggestions for ways to have more fun during this not back to school time. So yay, you're in the right place for that. And then some of you are like this lady and lacking a little bit of confidence. And you might even be on the verge of a, of a mini freak out. <laughs> but maybe it's all inside and you're trying to put on a good front for the kids or maybe it's seeping out a little bit and maybe it's showing up as doubts and second guessing and we're going to help you with that too so tell me in the chat which are you are you looking for fun ideas are you pretty confident are you scared to death are you somewhere in between let me know in the chat let's see if i can see it a little bit while we're all right both looking for fun ideas, scared. Okay, we've got a lot. And some of you um, were able to get the not back to school unschooling guide and there's lots of ideas in there too. So um, Katie's gonna put that link in here too in the chat. So if you didn't get a chance to get it, you might want it um, just for, for extra ideas because it's always fun, right? Um, nervous to go against the grain, absolutely. Um, confident. All right. Great, great, great. Lots of different, lots of different um, places. So let's do a quick explanation so that we can um, move that. You know, what is it? What is unschooling? Because a lot of people that are, um, especially with the pandemic, a lot of people have stumbled across the word unschooling and they're not exactly sure what that means. Or they think they know, but maybe they've only read a little bit. So here's a list of some key ideas about um, unschooling and it's in your workbook. So you don't have to write it all down if you wanna just print that. Um, or you can write it because for me, it helps me. It seems like the more senses I use, the more something 
um, gets really integrated. So if I see it and I hear it and I write it, that's good. You know, the good shot that I'll, <laughs> that I'll remember it. So, um, but if you read through and you kind of see what unschooling means, it's a legal homeschooling method. You know, it's, it's simply a subcategory of the big word homeschooling. And in some states, they don't even use that word. In some states, you're actually a private school. And so from a legal standpoint, it's, it can be a little bit different. Um, unschooling typically doesn't use quizzes or grades or assignments or subjects. We don't divide life into subjects because real life comes at us like with a tapestry of subjects all woven in some heavy, some light, whichever is actually the activity or the topic for the for what's happening in your world. Um, the other thing about unschooling that's important to know is that it's learner driven instead of teacher driven. And by that, what I mean is that the the children have interests and and that's the direction that we move in. And it's not about okay, so they, they were looking at spiders, so now I'm going to have them write a research paper about spiders or about um, that, you know, building up a whole unit study around a particular interest. Some people do that, but that's not unschooling. That's unit studies. And, um, and what we do instead is we follow their interests and their curiosities, and as parents, we partner with them. Do they want more resources? Usually a kid interested in spiders doesn't say, oh gosh, I sure wish I could write a book report about it. <laughs> Instead, they're more likely to just play with spiders or maybe they draw it or maybe they um, watch a YouTube video about it or maybe they look at it with a magnifying glass and there's all kinds of ways to gather information and learn. And so those kinds of classic things that we know like, um, book reports or research papers or worksheets or things like that. Um, that's really more teacher driven. That's helping the teacher understand whether the child is learning. But what we know as unschoolers is that we are hardwired to learn. It's part of our biology. We are curious beings and we want to move in the direction of solving some of the um, questions that pop into our world. So that's what unschooling does. So we're partnering with them, valuing their choices, and we trust that they're hardwired to learn. And then the learning happens, right? It doesn't take major orchestration on our part. We've been convinced that it has to be orchestrated by the adults or the kids will run amok. And it is not true. So that's the start of where we are. So at least we're all on the same page now of what is unschooling. All right, so who am I? <laughs> And why am I talking to you about this? Um, my kids are all grown now. They are 32, 30, and 27. Um, I started unschooling mom to mom with a bunch of other unschoolers back in 2014. And I, we had started homeschooling back in 1996. And then it quickly turned into unschooling. And then layers fell away. It wasn't the kind of thing that I suddenly said, oh, yeah, I'm going to be an unschooler. <laughs> I just thought we can we can do this more creatively and more things made sense and I just kind of moved along that continuum. So um, so we started unschooling mom to mom. Um, I had been blogging and then we had the big Facebook group and it's still a big Facebook group if you ever want to be part of that it's about thirty five thousand people and um, but don't panic they're not all recording not all. in progress and. Um, and so hopefully that's not going to go every time someone comes in. I don't know if it will. We'll see. Um, I've been a conference speaker and a community organizer wherever we lived. We were a military family, so we moved to a lot of different places. We unschooled in a lot of different states. And so I got to see a lot of different people on how, and see how they um, did this. And Katie, can you grab that? And... Uh, we saw what worked and what didn't work and I was continuing to volunteer and and continued to make resources for people to help them figure it out and now I have a podcast 
that Katie will put the link in there um, into the chat in case you haven't seen it. And some of you found this through the podcast. It's just a five or 10 minute pep talk to encourage you because sometimes we don't have a whole hour or two to listen to long podcasts, but we just need a little reminder. We just need a little nudge. And so um, you can find all these different kinds of resources at these two links, unschoolingmomtomom.com and suepatterson.com. So the biggest link is this Unschooling Mom to Mom website, because this has been going on for, you know, what, six or seven years, and um, no, eight, and a lot of free stuff is in there. So a lot of people are are a little bit unsure about whether they want to do any kind of coaching or anything like that. You have a ton of information here at the website that you can walk through. The difference is that we have all this free stuff or I can kind of hold your hand through some of it. So um, when you when you go over to the website, I want you just to kind of see this. We'll only take a couple seconds for this, but I want you, each of these have drop down menus with tons of information underneath. So in case you didn't have a chance to get over there, these are different um, topics that are full of information that can help you. There's a getting started link in there under resources. Also finding local groups. If you're having a hard time finding them, there's a whole web page that has Facebook groups and emails and websites that can help you find others that are closer to you. And when we emerge from the pandemic, we'll be back to having conferences and unschooling friendly um, opportunities for you to connect with people in real life because that was a lot of fun too for us and then these are the different um, coaching options that are available and throughout this webinar Katie will put different links in to help you in case you're thinking oh that kind of sounds like something that would help me and um, so this is available too and then the blog it's kind of hard to see, but it's got categories. If you were looking for certain things, like all the podcasts have transcripts and obstacles or what is de-schooling or how to unschool or stuff about teens or a bunch of articles about back to not going back to school, because since I've been blogging since like 1999 or something, um, there are a lot of articles every summer that rolled around. And I realized that you know, this is international. So some of you not back to school season isn't right now. It's at a different time of year. And so um, it, and it, it may or may not even be the same season. So, or it may be the same season, but you're in the Southern hemisphere. So we just have to kind of wing it and, um, and you can use this material for when the time rolls around for you. Because one of the things that's cool that we're going to talk about here in the webinar is a lot of these ideas, while they're great for this not back to school season, they're great all year long. And so what we often found was that um, you start to create a brainstorming list of things you wanna do and you can't fit that all in two weeks. And next thing you know, you can't fit that all in in a month. Next thing you know, I've got, you know, and you just start to develop this full rich life and that's how unschooling really thrives. So, all right. Podcast membership coaching, these are also there that you can go straight to those links. Um, the podcast one has all the podcasts, so that's kind of nice to be able to thumb through it and see. Maybe not really thumbing. So let's get down to what we're here for this not back to school season. You know, they're going back to school and we are not. And what are some successful unschoolers' best advice? What are what worked? What were things that um, that helped, um, helped make it go more smoothly, helped diminish the fear a little bit, helped, um, give you a little bit more confidence. So number one, take advantage of the sales, go ahead and, um, get the new journals or the drawing pads or the pens and the markers and maybe new clothes and shoes, or even a backpack. If they like the look of lunch boxes, then get one. They can carry all kinds of things in there. You know, they're not just for packing lunches, although snacks at the park are fun and to, it's fun to carry a cool lunch box there. But we packed a lot of My Little Ponies in lunch boxes as we were off and about for different things. And since the reality is that we may not be going out as much as we typically would have in a 
pre-pandemic world. You know, maybe what about fuzzy socks or beanbag chairs or pillows or ways to make your home more cozy because you're going to be home more. And so let's focus on making this a place that feels good. Um, so tell me in the chat if you've already taken advantage of good sales or some of the things that um, you've grabbed that will make your year run smoother. And maybe as you guys read those in the chat, it might help you, um, you know, just kind of shake the dust off of your own curiosity and create all about curriculum. It's not all about workbooks. It's about tools that you need to live a fun life. Maybe it's magnifying glasses, or maybe it is, um, different things that you can go out in the backyard with, or maybe it's, you're going to, um, I was, I saw this thing where they had taken all the bottles, like the leader bottles and turned them into bowling pins and they were having bowling in the, in the hallway. And so I don't, I think Katie's going to list, link off the, um, the Pinterest boards that I have that have a ton of resources, but there's a lot at the, general Pinterest. Um, it's pinterest.com slash you mom to mom. And if you just write unschooling mom to mom in the search thing on any of the social media platforms, you'll find it. But there's a lot of fun, cool kid activities to do. Um, also, if you're shopping, notice in the areas where they're trying to help people get their kids set for college and off to live in a dorm life, because you might find cute things for their rooms. They might wish they were, you know, had better pillows or had a, you know, had a furry rug to step down on when they first get out of bed. You know, it might help start their day off on the right foot, literally and figuratively. So um, in the workbook that Katie listed, and Kate, you can list it again because some other people have come in. Um, in the workbook, there are different places where you can write ideas. So as you see people write things in the chat or just as you look at these pictures and it kind of makes you think, oh yeah, she's been wanting to have a lamp by her bed or oh yeah, we need to get more phone chargers or what, what do we need to help our home run better? So that's the first one, taking advantage of the sales. And number two, we have critics, we have naysayers, and we need to have some quick answers to get us out of the hot seat. And maybe our kids need to have it too, but certainly we need to be able to navigate because this is the time that a lot of people have that lady's look <laughs> and they're like, what are you doing and why? Now, with the pandemic, there are a lot more people staying home and so it's not quite as um, you know, unusual. However, when you say, no, we kind of like the idea of homeschooling and we're not going to do it with the school, then we start to get the raised eyebrows, right? Um, so tell me in the chat, are you kind of a flight, fight or flight person? Are you, do you tend to argue with people or do you run away from it or wish you could run away from it? fight or flight, which are you? And we'll kind of look and see how people are, um, how people measure up, you know, whether we have a tendency to be a certain way or not, you know, and I'll talk about it a little later, but part of my rambly way is we are, we really are conditioned to be people pleasers, right? Whether it was our, our parents and how we brought, were brought up or our school and how, you know, pleasing the teacher mattered the most. Um, that makes it really hard for us to have criticism. So don't feel bad if you're like, oh, this is just getting on my last nerve. I can't, I don't even know what to do. It's getting under my skin. So here are a couple things to remember. It's about boundaries. And the thing about boundaries is they're your boundaries and you have to hold them. And you can't expect somebody else to hold them for you. They don't want your boundary there. <laughs> they want your boundary where they want it. 
And so if you want to be able to be the grown up in the room and make the choice that needs to be made because it's best for your family, you have to figure out where you're going to put your boundaries. And so I wanted to give you a couple of phrases, sentences that would script out a little bit for you to help you. So you can write these down or they're listed in the, um, on that second section in the uh, workbook. And the first one, for those of you that are more listening than watching, the first one is we're gonna give it a try. We can shift gears if this doesn't work. Sometimes people respond really well to that because they think, oh, thank goodness she hasn't drank the Kool-Aid. She hasn't joined some cult. You know, that it's not, um, she's still being a critical thinker. And so just because somebody says, are you sure that's a good idea? doesn't mean they want a full hour lecture on why it's a good idea. They just had a fleeting thought and they tossed it your way. And so you've got your little badminton racket and you just ping it right back and you say, we can shift if it doesn't work, I'm aware. And then another thing is the school system is a mess though. So we're gonna step away from it for a little bit. Or I've found a lot of good resources to help me online, I'm good. And then that whole concept of deflecting, tell me about your kids. Are they, are they playing volleyball this year? What are they doing? Because most of the time people want to talk about their own kids, right? <laughs> um, so let's see, I have all these notes and I've just been talking instead of really checking them out. Um, I do have a, a YouTube video called Naysayer, Critics and Naysayers that might be helpful because sometimes we can feel frustrated with our friends and family who are um, critical and they're really just operating out of fear usually. And it, the, the video might help you feel a little bit more compassionate, you know, to understand, I get it. You're used to telling me what to do. And I've kind of moved into this new phase of adulthood where I actually make my own choices. You know, our, our adult, of the grandparents in our world, they're not used to that. They're used to you coming to them and taking their advice and doing what they say. And so it's a whole new thing. So figuring out how you're going to navigate through the world is sometimes tricky. So I also have an um, unschooling guide called uh, Critics and Naysayers, and it will it'll help you. I think I have it. Oh, this was the other part I wanted to tell you. Katie, can you put the link in there for the critics and naysayers guide? I can't see the chat while I'm talking. Um, two, three things I want you to remember too. You don't have to use the word unschooling. You don't have to say it. In some, in some families, some communities, that can really feel too radical, too fly in your face. So don't say it. Just say we're homeschooling. Just say we're winging it. Just say we're having a um, hands-on experiential approach to learning. Very progressive, very well-researched. <laughs> um, don't share your doubts with people that have other choices because when you do, they feel compelled to fix it. They feel compelled to say to you, oh, well, then here's what we need to do. Let's get these kids back in school. Let's um, make this go better. And here's how I know it works. Because that's the other thing. We're conditioned to believe from school that there's only one right answer. So they're doing the one right answer and you're not. So they need to show you the one right answer. When in fact, there are a multitude of answers for things that you can do or ways that you can approach learning and life and raising kids and parenting. And so don't share your doubts with somebody who has um, maybe a different agenda. And then don't try to convince them to agree with you. Sometimes we think, well, if I could just say it the right way, <laughs> they would surely see the light. But that's not how humans operate. Sometimes, depending on the relationship, and maybe the relationship is, a, is to agree to disagree, but sometimes you're not gonna convince them and that's okay. They may roll around. A lot of people that I knew that were very critical of unschooling in the beginning when their kids turned teenagers and had a lot of trouble, 
they were calling me saying, okay, now tell me about this thing again. <laughs> and suddenly they weren't as um, critical. So that's interesting too. Um, the third one, you've got to examine the stories in your head. What does that mean? So it's really the hardest, one of the hardest parts about unschooling is undoing the faulty thinking, letting go of the stories that you might be holding on to of what they're missing if they don't go to school or all the things that could go wrong. Does anybody have disaster mindset? You're always laying in bed thinking of how it's all going to fall apart. Um, you know, take some retraining for your brain to focus more on the positive. Or maybe you had all these great ideas of what, you, what this was gonna look like, only the kids are not agreeing. Because that's one of the things too, right? That if we are trying to help kids learn how to know themselves and help us recognize the things that they value, we have to be okay with them saying, no, thank you. So um, you wanna identify your worries. You know, think about, I'm afraid, what? They can't get into college. I'm afraid they're gonna end up under a bridge. I'm afraid they'll never move out. I'm afraid they'll hate me in the end because I didn't make them. All the different fears that we all have um, to some degree. Think about where are they not true? Do they already know things that will keep them from having that disaster that your brain in all of its fear has taken you from point A to point <sighs> M all the way down to instead of just one step down the road, it's making you panic. And so you have to look at these stories in your head because these stories seep out and they keep you from having a happy life. They keep you from being able to connect with your kids because you're so worried about controlling the situation because you've got so much fear and you want them to change their behavior. So your fear gets calmed down a little bit. Well, that's not their job. That's your job. Your job is to look at these spheres and see what's rational, what's not rational, and where do I just need a little more information? Because just from those things that I listed, yes, they get into college. I don't know any unschoolers that are living under bridges, and I know a lot. I know unschoolers that have left early in their teens, mid-teens, and I know unschoolers that live at home and that the situation is different in every single family and it works. And that's the, that's the beauty of all of it is that you get to be really, really individualizing this approach to living within a family, but you have to be brave enough to, to do something other people aren't doing. You have to be flexible enough to try new things, to say this fits or doesn't fit for us for now because you know kids change what fits right now and you think oh gosh they will never you know whatever it is that is happening at this moment and you can't even see the way out of that tunnel and six months from now you're like yeah I remember I felt that way and it just didn't happen like that and we can remember that when they were little babies when we think oh gosh they'll never stop crying and they did they stopped crying and the same thing happens in all the different growth and development things that happen with kids. So don't let fear make your choice is the bottom line for this particular um, secret or tip or whatever we want to call it. Um, let's see. Oh, I did, I did have a note here that said, you know, we've had a lot of years of people telling us to get back in line or something awful will happen. And you'll see that that was often just a crowd control technique that was happening in, school, happening in schools. And certainly nothing awful is gonna happen if you choose to unschool. Doors don't close. Relationships get prioritized. Curiosity and interests are allowed to grow. So from the kid's standpoint, no problems. <laughs> from the parent's standpoint, we have a lot of fears and some of them are irrational that we have to let go of. So I have several podcasts 
one specifically about identifying fears and um, it's done a little differently than the other podcasts, but I would love for you to listen to it and then let me know what you think. Cause I've had a few people ask me to do a, a couple more like that. It, it might be good. And the other thing to, that I want to make sure you have access to is the creating confidence membership, because I have a, um, a group of people that bounce ideas off each other. And we have coaching calls that happen multiple times a week so that we can, we can deal with these fears before they become too huge. Deal with these fears before they cause too much damage, before we wish we hadn't said that or we wish we hadn't done that. And so when you have a support system that you can kind of lean on that say, you know, this is driving me nuts, but I don't think, I don't know what to do. That's what this creating confidence membership group, we're able to, um, you're able to talk to people that are also on this unschooling path that are trying to live in a more partnery way with their kids. And, and it's really helpful because that's kind of hard to find when you find somebody, you know, when, when you need to be around people and their answers are often well, you know, just put them back in school or show them who's boss or whatever is the mainstream way to approach things. And it's nice to have people that when you say, oh, you know, our sleep cycle is way off and they're staying up real late and they're sleeping in all day. And what do I do? And how do I, how do I manage this? And, um, and we're able to talk about it and with having a lot of different, um, with parents that have a lot of different ages of children, it helps to be able to say, oh yeah, mine did that then. And they stopped <laughs> or mine did that then and they're still doing it and I got okay with it or whatever the situation is. So, um, so that's our third one. And I think the fourth one might be what a lot of people really came for is new traditions. Let's think about what can we do when we start to take away things like we're not having the first day of school and doing all that kind of stuff, what are we putting in its place? So we get to put things in, in, in their place deliberately and with intention, right? So you get to think about what are you going to do instead? What's something your family would enjoy? And what's something that you might do every year at this time? So yeah, it looks a little different now than it did pre-COVID. And I'm sure some of those activities are still happening, maybe not as big a scale as they used to. We used to have a lot of conferences right before the school year started. Those aren't happening. Um, a lot of homeschool groups used to host um, not back to school parties, maybe at the local swimming pool on the first day of school. And that's probably not happening either. But you can have smaller little parties and maybe the party is just with the family. And I think we have to sometimes reevaluate what's the reality here. All right. We, that doesn't mean, oh gosh, our life is lousy. We can have a really good life. It just may not be what we had planned and it may not have a lot. We may not have a lot of say over it and, but we can still make sure that our relationships and our kids are having more, um, a fuller richer experience so you might be doing things that are a little closer to home or um you know schools kind of condition us to think that that it has to be a big group for it to be any good and especially if you have kind of a leaning towards an extroverted side you may feel that way but what's the truth is a lot of kids don't like big groups a lot of kids are really happier with one or two or they really aren't quite there yet. And the, one of the beauties of unschooling is being able to truly individualize this. What works for your kids? And how can you make it fit your family? So thinking about what do they need and not what does the rest of the world think is important? What do my kids need right now? And how can I say yes to at least some of it? So some of the ideas over in the not back to school unschooling guide um, on page 12, there are 30 suggestions, but we can put some suggestions in the chat and I can tell you some here and 
um, like a special brunch with their favorite foods or a snack tray with all kinds of, uh, you know, we're having kind of munching all day. Or um, some people have um, bought art supplies and different cool things and it's in a box when they come down stairs for breakfast on, on one of the days, maybe the day that the kids go off to school. Maybe your kids are not even involved with very many school kids. So you don't need to have a set time just because everybody else does for school. But, um, but if that's something that's bothering you, you can do that. You could take photos in the same spot each year. It's funny in the unschooling mom to mom group, they're sharing photos of their own kids on the day that school starts in their neighborhood. And, you know, the kids asleep on the couch again and um or or playing in the backyard or swimming or <coughs> excuse me or surfing or doing whatever it is that they want to do and it's fun to watch people over the years as their kids get older and things change and some things stay the same and maybe you might want to have a movie marathon you know that's always fun to pick you know whether it's a certain actor or a certain genre or something that would be fun to do when you're popping popcorn and you're bringing everybody's pillows down towards where the tv is and and you get to enjoy the um the movies so that would be something that might be fun um or make a list of what would be your favorite things to do this month you know lots of times where you live, certain things happen seasonally. And so one of the things to pay attention to is how can we tap into that to whatever degree we can at this stage of the game. But um, maybe there are some things that we could go out and do and it's really pretty weather for it or it's really before, before it gets too cold or before it gets too hot or whatever happens to be the situation where you are. Or maybe um, certain activities are happening at, at different um, community places like museums. And, and lots of times, if you go to a museum that is um, during the school day, especially like on a Monday, because lots of times they don't do field trips on Mondays, and you, um, you have the place to yourself. And that's something that's kind of cool about this. Um, I have more ideas at at Pinterest, let me see if I have, is it on this? Yeah, so if you go over to the Pinterest board, which is this, you, uh, you mom to mom, um, you'll see that there's a not back to school um, board and it has memes and articles and different things to inspire you. And then there's also this, the dot, dot, dot has to do with party planning because how can you have, how can you make some fun stuff? Just because you don't go to school doesn't mean you don't have to, that you, you get to, um, or you have to skip some of the fun stuff. You can pull out the things that you and the kids like and do those. So Katie's gonna put these two, or probably already has, put these two boards as links in the chat so that you're able to see, um, what are some ideas to get your creativity going? So sometimes there are advantages that you could be overlooking. And when we sometimes think about, oh gosh, they're missing out, we need to do a little reframing. And some of the things, so you might wanna write these down or in the, it's in the not back to school guide, but you might wanna write these down that summer's not over and that we get to continue on or if you're in the Southern hemisphere, winter's not over and you get to continue on. Um, but there's shorter lines at anywhere that you go once the summer is over, once the kids go back to school. There's no crowds at lakes and beaches, no sleep deprivation. So much is written about kids and how a lot of problems are happening because they're not getting enough rest. Um, that's something that doesn't have to happen in our homes. We get to adjust the schedule to fit what's going on in our families. They get to have healthy food choices all day long. They can be munching or they can have fun food choices. They can have whatever because you get to balance it all out and you are there in the home with them. 
They get uninterrupted creativity and play. They get to pursue their passions. They have time for friendships. They connect with the parents. They travel and explore the world. Maybe not as much as they did, but they, you know, you still have all kinds of opportunities. YouTube and, and the internet has, has really um, jumped huge in a huge way about um, giving us access to other things that are happening all around the world. So that might be something to look at. And remember that your calendar and your schedule, it's yours now. You get to put what you want on it as opposed to what um, other people say you have to do and you have to work around it. No, you guys are calling your own shots and unlimited hugs. Of course, that's always good. Um, the other parts that I think is something to remember that's less um, itemy for things to do during this back to school time that we're making this shift is to think about the advantages. When you can think about why are you doing this, then you can have more confidence. Then people's raised eyebrows or their little comments don't impact you as much because you've got these ideas in your head. This is more what's mattering, that the kids are developing confidence and learning how to find resources and to become problem solvers. And what does it mean to get to make a choice? And how does that, how is that a benefit for when they are adults and they're making choices? How has it been harder for us because we're in that kind of people pleasing mode or reactionary because we had 12 years usually where somebody else told us what to do the whole time. <coughs> so you get to cultivate curiosities. They continue to enjoy learning. And you may think, well, I don't think they're learning. They're, all they do is play Fortnite. But I want to encourage you to maybe reframe that. And if that's something, you know, you might put in the chat and I'll put something at the Facebook group. And um, if you, if technology is a big problem for you, um, let me know in the chat where you, uh, where you hang out. Are you at Instagram? Were you on the podcast? Were you at Facebook? How do you, how do we connect? so that I can help you get some resources to help overcome some fears about technology. So even if you don't write it in the chat, you can always DM me on Instagram or um, send me a message on Facebook and I can help you find your way. So, um, you know, these other things on here are important where they get to truly have an individualized learning plan and they learn to be okay with differences in other people and to not criticize people because they're different from them. Um, and the world really is your classroom. So these are advantages that you could be overlooking that it might be really helpful to, um, to think about when we have, because you know, you can only think one thing at a time. If you have a big fear coming in, the best thing to do is to really shine some light on it to see what part's <laughs> rational and what part's not. And then what can I do to put, how can I reframe it so that I'm able to- Okay, then. All right, Kate. I lost the chat. The chat. The chat didn't go through, so I had, I mean, the app didn't go through like she said it was, so I'm on the chat with the, so they got to, uh, basically I got to log in the chat and uh, have them do it, because I got a meeting, a Zoom meeting. Tyrone so, Penny Branch, if you could click mute, oh. that'd be really great. Thank you. All right, um, so the fifth thing that I want you to think about is to kind of be on the lookout for where you're gonna have a stumbling place. You've got choices. You can move in the direction where things remind you that you're the odd man out, or you can move in a direction where there's less judgment and less criticism. And so if, um, 
if you go in that direction where you're going to have more criticism, it's going to give you more of a fretful, worried time. You're going to find yourself two steps forward, three steps back. And whereas if you move in this other direction, you're going to have a happier time with your unschooling choice. So when you're new at this and you're feeling self-conscious and you're not all that confident, you have these choices. And lots of unschoolers take this time to kind of steer clear of people and activities that glamorize school. You know, not necessarily forever, but for a bit. You know, if the cousins are super into school, now's a good time to put a little distance there. You don't have to say, we're staying away from you. <laughs> you just have, you just do other things and let them, um, and maybe it has to do with a neighborhood full of kids. It might be a good time to plan a camping trip or to do a road trip or come back when the hoopla has kind of died down a little. It won't, it won't take that long. Um, you have choices over how you're going to spend your time and what kind of influence your children are also dealing with. You're going to bump into issues along the way. And so when you go into it with your eyes open, aware of where problems might come up, we can choose the path that's going to be easier. We can choose the path that's going to have more joy. That's not to say it will be forever joyful, um, but we can choose not to continue to ask for support from people that aren't going to give us support or to hang out in places that are all about glamorizing school right now. So I think that um, when we hop back onto Pinterest, I think I have it on here. Yeah. Um, also, towards the top is where I put it because there are a lot of boards on Pinterest. What do I have? Does it say how many boards? Oh, no. Um, I have a collection of movies that are kind of unschooly movies. And, um, you know, Ferris Bueller and the movie Accepted, which I love. And um, those are those are kind of fun, a little bit irreverent, a little bit um, not glamorizing school because it gets to be, um, you know, it's kind of refreshing to have options where the story premise isn't centering around school, right? And so the same with the books without school mentioned. Um, there's a, in the Not Back to School guide, for those of you that got it, it's on page eight. There's a bunch of books that are um, fun to read and aren't gonna mention school. And, uh, and I think that that is fun. And then there's, I have a lot of them here, 36 of them. Um, of different books that might be fun to read where you don't have to worry about um, that you're living this other non-school approach. So let's try to normalize that as opposed to perpetuating that school is the norm. Even though the majority of people go there, we can still help each other find the books that we need to help kids move um, without a lot of self-doubt. So the next six, we got two more, is to help the kids find fun things to do. So we mentioned a few things out in the community, you know, which may or may not be accessible right now to you, but maybe it's time to help the kids see what they can do at home. Um, let me move this in case this is in your way. In the workbook, I don't think I have the, I didn't put pages on it, which I didn't know I was going to make so many pages. And originally I was just going to do a few, but in that workbook, Katie, if you want to put the workbook link up again, for those that are just now joining us um, in that seven secrets of successful unschoolers, there is a page on there of helping kids find fun things to do where you can list things like solo activities or fun family activities or outside activities or community activities, things that let's brainstorm what we're going to do. Because again, we're being more intentional on what we're choosing. And I do, I have some links at the bottom of that page of, I have a blog post called Mom, I'm Bored. And basically what I did when Michael first came home from school is we wandered around the house and wrote down, oh yeah, you could do this in this room and you could do this in this room. And, oh, we do need to get a new deck of cards because that doesn't have 52 anymore <laughs> or whatever needed to happen and what was available to him and 
helping him see, oh yeah, this thing at the bottom of the closet, let's pull it out. And when you can help kids figure out what's available to them, that's really helpful. Um, there's also in here, um, and I'm pointing this like you can see me, but I, in the workbook, um, there's a link to unschooling favorites as far as games go that's over at unschooling mom to mom if you go to the website in the search box and write games you'll get the blog post that has a list of all kinds of games that a lot of unschoolers have um, talked about enjoying playing with their kids and so some kids certain kids like certain types of games if your kid doesn't like it don't worry about it if your kid does they might have some other ideas that if you like this, you might like that. And so that's kind of fun. So helping them, getting them the art supplies that they need, getting them the science and discovery tools that they need, all the fun things that are, um, that help them have a fun life. And so there is a unschooling guide called Brainstorm Time which is really, I've had a lot of unschooling families that have been unschooling a long time to say that the brainstorm time guide helped them because it gave them um, an opportunity to talk to their kids about a variety of things that they could do instead. You know, like let, do we wanna do community service? Do we wanna um, read more? Do we wanna have movie nights? Do we wanna cook together? Do we wanna go on a hike? You know, there's 20 different things that are real life activities. And then you kind of brainstorm with them about what would be fun to do. And so that brainstorming time is, is good. It's also included in the Creating Confidence membership if you end up deciding you want to join that. But we brainstorm a lot. And, um, and so that would be another option for you. And so I gave you, I made, because I was just on a PDF roll <laughs> and I made something for you. Katie, if you wanna put this link in there, um, it's, you know, lots of times people take a picture of their kid on the first day of school on the sidewalk in front of the house or something like that. And I thought, what about a different approach for unschoolers? What about, sure, take the picture, share it however you want. Um, but what about actually connecting with them? What about talking with them about um, what's going on in their world? What's about, have it be all about them. And so have you noticed that like kids love looking at pictures of themselves when they're younger? They really do kind of want it to be all about them. And so why not give it to them? And um, I'm not sure where that's coming from. So these different, you can print this on the PDF. It, it, if you're having an ink issue, lots of times people are, I didn't put any pictures or anything on the second page so that you can just print it out and write it, or you could just read it off of the PDF and they could tell, you could do it as a, um, as a phone video, you know, that you could just record them saying their answers. And so, you know, don't want to turn it into a writing activity where you'd hand it to them and make them fill it out. Instead, you do the writing for them because the goal is not I'm trying to sneak a little writing in. The goal is I'm connecting with my kid and my kid feels like their choices are valuable and I know more, a little more about them because I have done these list of 25 questions. And so at the bottom, if they want to sign it, it's kind of fun to see what their signature looks like, or maybe it's an X marks the spot kind of thing. <laughs> and that's fine too. So you've got that PDF too. So you've got two PDFs here in this webinar, the seven secrets for successful unschoolers and this all about me. And because the seventh one, the seventh tip is to create your own action plan. You know, working on strengthening your foundation, reading about unschooling and de-schooling, listening to podcasts, watching videos, just like with the kids where we're trying to figure out how do they learn best? Well, how do you learn best? Because you've got some learning to do and some unlearning to do. And so when you can get more information and you can um, get the support that you need, then you're gonna have a lot more 
um, likelihood of unschooling success because it's about knowledge and support. So whichever way works for you. Sometimes, sometimes places where coaching calls don't work. But sometimes having a podcast works and listening to that or, or figuring out how to connect with the local unschoolers. That might be a way for you to get support. Or even in my in the membership group, I have a lot of people that don't come to the coaching calls, but they're on the WhatsApp channel and they're asking each other and talking about stuff all the time. And so that's kind of a cool thing if you're if you're thinking, well, I'd like that, but it doesn't really fit. So there is a workbook page about um, creating this action plan. And so I have it sectioned off where you have three things of what are you going to do to make sure you have more knowledge. What are you going to read specifically? What are you going to read or watch or listen to? And because in addition to knowledge and support, it really is going to take action. It really does take you deciding what you're going to do. How many of us have said, oh, I thought I would do it and I never got around to it. And next thing I know, the summer's over. And so having an action plan is really going to help you. It doesn't have to be big steps. It can be little baby steps because when you've done a baby step towards unschooling confidence every week and you have done 52 of them in a year, that's pretty good. You've made some progress. So that's something that you are, um, that you have control over. So let's see here. What else? I'm looking at the last notes. Oh, the other part about action plan is it might help to think about what time of day works for me, you know, where you get really specific, you know, about smart goals, that's specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. And when you get really specific about, okay, I have coffee in the mornings and they're, and they're kind of occupied or they're still sleeping or whatever, that's a good time for me to take 15 minutes to read something or no, I sleep until everybody gets up and then we're all up at the same time and it's chaos. So maybe it calms down midday and you would have a little bit more time or maybe it's an evening thing or maybe you can listen to a podcast while you're doing the dishes or while you walk the dog or something like that. And um, thinking about where am I going to fit this in specifically? How am I going to make this happen? You know, and I keep bringing up the creating confidence membership group because of course I love them. And, but we've started doing action and accountability every Monday. We have a quick 30 minute call about what are we going to, what's the action we're trying to get done this week? What are, what are a couple of little things that need to happen? And then on Friday we check in and some people check in by email with me. Some people check in on Facebook or WhatsApp, but it helps to have other people that say, oh yeah, I meant to do that. Or you did that and that's a great idea. I hadn't thought of that. And so some of those things are really helpful. So these were our seven secrets. And so we'll just kind of wrap it up that the first one was taking advantage of the sales. The second one was pre-planning some quick answers for critics and naysayers. The third one is examining the stories you're carrying around with you. The fourth one is creating new traditions. The fifth one is be on the lookout for the, for the potholes in the road. Plan for the success. The sixth one is helping kids find fun things to do. And the seventh one is creating your own action plan. And remember, knowledge plus support is unschooling success, plus a little action from you. So that is, undo here, that's what I have for you. How was it? Did you guys, let me see, because now I can see the chat <laughs> before I'm like, I can't see what they're doing. Um, hope, tell me in there, is there anything that as you were looking at it, you're thinking, here's where my problem is. Um, go ahead and, and, and write it. And we can, what time is it? Oh, 101, my time. I did pretty well. Um, let me get this to everyone. Scary stories I create in my head. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So true. Can you be my new best friend? I sure can. <laughs> That's funny. Um, 
we can, you know, and that's one of the things. It's kind of a weird thing. I'll just go ahead and share it with you, even though we're recording. Um, you know, my kids are grown. So it's just my husband and me and the dogs. And so um, I love my little membership group because I get to hang out with them a lot. And we're chatting about things and it reminds me of what worked and what didn't work. And, and so often it is, um, you know, we hear things and we think, well, my kid's not doing that or my kid's not, you know, whatever, that somebody's kid did something monumental and your kid. And, and so i just want to reassure everybody, most kids are just being average kids. Well, you know, there's one kid that sailed around the world, not all of them. <laughs> and so when we remember that kind of stuff, and I don't mind sharing when I made mistakes, because I was not, I didn't come into this with, um, I came into this with regular suburban mom, mainstream parenting. It was the 90s. <laughs> we were, you know, the kids were in daycare and I was working and um, and then I had a third one and I wasn't going to work and, and then school just didn't fit. And I thought, I, I can do this. I don't know how long I will, but I can do this. And so I think that sometimes it helps to hear from people from all different walks of life who, you know, I, so I, my point is just that I didn't come into this thinking I want to be the best parent on the, of course, I wanted to be the best parent, but I wasn't really doing any action to get there. You know, reading a couple of parenting magazines wasn't really going to do it. And so I needed to kind of undo some of that thought process, some of those fears, figure out what the motivation was, figure out um, how can I be better? How can I, what, what, what are my obstacles to being the parent that I want to be? And so, you know, it was a process, a lot of trial and error and, um, but I, I'm here to tell you it'll work. And so I guess that's my point is that I like being able to be here and tell you it'll work. Hang in there. <laughs> um, where are IHIP examples to help start? I think that's New York, right? IHIP. Tell me, let me see, Adrian. Yes. So go to the blog, um, unschooling mom to mom slash blog and write New York in the search box. And um, Amy Milstein, who is a longtime New York unschooler, wrote a big blog post about how to walk New Yorkers through. And for those of you that don't know, New York has some of the hardest restrictions for how to make unschooling work. It's doable and, un and unschoolers in New York are doing it all the time, but there are some steps that you wanna check the boxes and that way you can have smooth sailing. So check that, um, check that blog post. Um, let me see here. I think I can, I'll just grab it real fast if y'all don't mind. Um, so I should just share my screen and then you can see what I'm doing. I will. I will. Um, so this one is called Afraid of New York. All I did was I wrote New York right there in that search box. And then afraid of New York regulations. And this is from Amy. And let me see if I can. Did it happen? Why did it happen? Oh, there are lots of Michigan unschoolers and lots of Virginia unschoolers and lots of all the different places. And if you go to the webpage, um, it'll help you or even now you can just write in Facebook you could write your state and the word unschoolers and you'll find groups and so you want to find a group that has a lot of a lot of members or a group that it shows they have an active um, group and over on the unschooling mom to mom Facebook group we have a I, I'm sorry we have threads based upon states and countries and you can put in the search box on the Facebook group, your state or your country, and you can say hi there and see if somebody else is in your town or somebody else can help you with a question that you might have. And so that's something available too. Um, 
Okay, let's see. We say we homeschool and I make sure we look halfway presentable so they don't call CPS. Yeah, some days go better than others. But you can, um, some of the things that I was able to do that helped, um, I would often keep a hairbrush in the car. I would keep a milk crate with flip-flops or shoes or something for when suddenly you look in the back seat and somebody doesn't have any shoes on and you got to go somewhere that you need shoes or that there are little jackets or that there are um, all the different things that you might need. So if you just kind of pause for a second and think, what do they forget? <laughs> you know, wipes so that even when they've outgrown diapers, you still want wipes because it's messy life gets messy. And so ever, all of a sudden somebody eats Cheetos, <laughs> you need some wipes. And um, okay, so let's see, Yolanda had a good idea. Let me just see if I can find it. Instead of limiting or adding to our lives, adding to our lives has been better. Playing board games, going to the park, baking, art activities, relaxing and reading together. This is in addition to the various uses of technology, video games, researching on the computer, Instagram becomes part of life. It's okay to have a plan or a list of activities. It's not a free for all. I guide and suggest. Yeah, I think that part of one of the things that's kind of hard with the internet and is you can misunderstand what somebody says when they are explaining how unschooling works and you can get the impression it's a free for all. And in some families, it is a free-for-all. And sometimes it's a free-for-all one day, but not another day. And so there can just be a whole lot of variations to it. What I found that really helped parents, especially because we had a ton of parents coming in with COVID and they didn't have COVID, but they came into the homeschooling community because of COVID. Um, I found, you know, and they had those color-coded schedules that showed every 30 minutes they're going to do, oh God, I just, my heart broke for them because I thought everybody that, I mean, I said this to someone and they said, that's not true. Some people really love that. I'm like, have you seen them at home by themselves? Have they told you specifically? <laughs> and I think of how many people feel guilty when they can't do that 30 minute, 30 minute, 30 minute thing. And the reality is we have these other humans that have another agenda and we have to listen to them. And that doesn't mean 100% we do everything they want. We drop everything and it means we partner with them. And sometimes just because they've got a you know, less maturity, less lifespan is that we have to meet them where they are at, at the moment. We have to help them get their cup full so that they don't feel so graspy to get their cup full, you know, so that if you can, if you can help them get their needs met, they're going to be in much better frame of mind to try something you want to try. Then if you've been busy saying, do it my way, do it my way, do it my way, then all of a sudden you have set up a power struggle that didn't have to happen. But you have to spend a little bit of time working on that trust that you really are going to listen to them, that you're not just trying to manipulate them. It takes a while, um, especially it takes a while depending on um, uh, depending on what kind of approach you had with them before, you might have to do a little bit of damage control. Um, not that it was terrible. To, I mean, I said that one time to someone and they were, looked at me like they were going to burst into tears. Parenting is all about trial and error. It's all about making a mistake, wishing we did it differently. Think of it as just data. It's just data so that the next time you can do a little better. <laughs> and that's a good role modeling for them too, because they don't want to think I couldn't tell mom because she's so dang perfect. No, mom's messing up too. We're all just trying our best. And so when you, that's probably a good, a good note to end on, um, you know, always just try your best, keep moving in the direction of being the parent you want to be, get the information that you need, get the support you need, take the action that you need and, um, and connect with your kids. So I'm going to, I'm going to stop because I could just sit here and read this and talk all day, but <laughs> we'll have to do it another time. So you guys, thanks for coming. And um, it did record. So I don't know if I, 
I might be able to send you the recording or it might just be the thing that you made it, you got it. All right, you guys have a great rest of the day and the weekend and enjoy your family and your unschooling adventures. And I will see you in all the places. Take care. Bye-bye.